Hey, what up guys? It's JD Reviews back with another action figure review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends series Fox Studios uh, Deadpool 2, Deadpool and Negasonic 2 pack that just recently came out. Just a quick disclaimer as well. I'm not going to go over Negasonic. So if you guys were looking to get a closer look at that figure, I will put a link to another reviewer that I think you guys can uh you know, pay attention to and put on your radar. That's MCU Collector 24. So I have a link to his video down in the description if you guys wanna take a closer in-depth look at the two pack. Um, I myself primarily bought into this just for the Deadpool. I wish that it did come single carded. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate with me on that. With that being said, let's take a quicker look at the packaging. And right here on the front, it's very interesting to look at um, because it has a lot of Sharpie marks that you can see here. Um, it does have the actual name of the superhero. So the, the real identity. So like Deadpool would be Wade Wilson. And we have a Deadpool sticker. It's kind of a faux sticker. And then you have Deadpool and Negasonic here displayed. Um, yeah, if we take a look at the side, uh, we do have Marvel Legends here with the Negasonic, you know, uh, really dope artwork, the silhouette they've been doing for the movie stuff. And then that carries on over here to the back, not too much on the bottom. We have a nice cool picture of Deadpool there with the same kind of scribbles. And then at the top, we pretty much have the same kind of sticker we've seen on the front. And then we have that silhouette there on the side. So not too much uh, difference. I do have, let's do a quick box comparison, uh, the Storm. And you can kind of see um, the difference as far as, you know, how they, how he put the sticker over the X logo and, you know, the names are scratched out. This one is obviously silver and we do see um, a different art style on this one. So let's get that out of the way though. We're not really here for that today. We're here to look at Deadpool. So let's crack this thing open and see what it's actually about. All right, guys, so here is Wade Wilson, AKA Deadpool outside of his packaging. And I really got to take my hat off to Hasbro on this one. I think they really killed the sculpt work, the proportions, the coloring, the accessories. I think they gave us what they can out of a Deadpool. That's being a rated R based figure uh, with the Deadpool 1 being rated R, Deadpool 2 being PG-13. I think this was the perfect opportunity for us to get this figure. And I'm really excited to add this to my collection. Um, just taking a quicker and closer look at the Deadpool sculpt work. Um, if we can just zoom in here and focus in on this detail, man, just appreciate this. Let's have a moment of silence just of appreciation. Nah, but for real though, the sculpt work on this shit is dope. Like all the little details right there, all the little creases that you see are all sculpted in with the nice texturing throughout. Um, every every angle you look at this Deadpool, you can find something new that I didn't see before. Like I didn't even pick up on the little dash marks right here on the shin guards. Um, so coming in at the head sculpts, I think this dead on looks like the Ryan Reynolds, you know, shape of the head, you know, from him wearing the suit in the movies and just the shoulders and everything. They sit really nice, the length of the arms. I think they really nailed it here with Deadpool. I don't really have any uh, nitpicks here with this. Um, I think they did the costume justice. So even taking a look here at the chest, you can see a nice little level of detail there. You know, I think a nice black wash would have really brought this out, um, but a lot of you customizers can go ahead and do that yourself. Um, but regardless of that, Hasbro put the sculpt and the time in there. So that's really, really well done. You can see just some of the creases right there on the ribs with the, the matte black right there on the side of the ribs, you know, and just right there on the shoulders. We have some nice uh, sculpted in line work. And then you have, you know, just right here on this little collar piece, there's some nice details. And just right here on the back with the droop on the head that we've come to know on Deadpool's, you know, different representations of him. Um, some nice detail right here on the uh, sheets. Back. We will talk about these, um, you know, gun holsters here, but you do have some nice sculpted in details with some guns in there. And then just taking a look at the uh, kind of, you know, paint slop here on the buckle, but I'm really not mad at it. I can go ahead and fix that myself. Um, but you do have the nice silver buckles here throughout the figure. And then you have some nice tannish kind of brown paint right here for some of the pouches. And then you have that same color carrying through on this side. 
and then you have a nice little holster here that we'll talk about. And a lot of these are glued into place, like these are not gonna come off. This one, however, you can kind of cut off. It is kind of hovering there, but it is not attached to this. So if you take the, the holster off here, or uh, the belt guard or whatever, the strap, uh, you're still gonna have the katana kind of hang out there, uh, the sheath. So, but yeah, coming back into the detail, you got some nice black paint throughout, kind of break up some of that red. And then looking at the boots, you have some nice little guards here, and then some black paint. Yeah, man, the detail is crazy. Like you even have the sculpted, uh, texture from the red part within the hinge right here. It's really nicely done. Just the creases right here on the back of the arm. I swear you can just sit and look at this figure all day. I have been. Don't tell my wife. And yeah, we do have some of those um, newer elbows that we've seen on War Machine. Was it War Machine that we saw this on first? It's nice to see it here on the uh, elbow area, but it kind of sucks that we didn't have that carried on here. Um, but I'm sure we will get there with uh, later figures coming out. That's really dope though. I really am enjoying this figure. It's very comedic to have, you know, just the different expressions that you can get out of him. So yeah, with that being said, let's take a closer look at those accessories and what type of funny expressions we can pull off with this guy. So for the first accessory, we get a total of actually uh, four pairs of hands. So this is the first interchangeable set, which is a pair of fists. And then we get a pair of open displayed hands. Right here, we have a pair of katana holding hands. Um, and also I forgot to mention that the back of these uh, last two pairs that we'll look at have some nice vibrant silver for the padding on the glove. Whereas the first two pairs that we just looked at, the open display hands and the fists, um, come in just a molded black plastic. So very odd, um, but whatever. I'm sure if you wanted to paint them to match, you can go ahead. And for his last pair of hands, he comes with these trigger finger hands. He also comes with these two uh, pistols right here that are not based on any realistic gun sculpts that I've seen. Um, so to me, they're kind of a faux pistol. Um, and yeah, coming back down to the little detail that I was going to talk about earlier, he does have these Desert Eagle kind of inspired pistols in his holster, but the only unfortunate thing um, about this is they're glued in there. So I have seen other reviewers and other people pop those out. Unfortunately, they most, most of them have broke the trigger finger kind of area on those guns. But once you do get them out, the guns right here fit into those holsters very nicely. So uh, please be aware of that if you do want to get these guns into the holster. So he also comes with uh, two katanas and they fit into the katana holding hands very nice and secure. I don't really have any complaints as far as him holding them. Um, they are a little bit shorter. I wish they would have been a little bit longer. I'm not sure if the proportion is correct uh, for real world katanas. Um, these are a new uh, sculpt. They have a nice vibrant silver right there on the blade, a nice glossy black handle. And then coming around here to the back, they fit into the sheath very nicely. So there's no scraping there. You just gotta make sure they are lined up with the sheath correctly. And yeah, they fit in very secure. Um, and that's not gonna fall out. All right, so if you guys remember, I mentioned this little holster down here on the left leg, and that does have a little hole in there. And we do get in the package a very tiny little uh, serrated kind of blade here. And that's done in a nice silver paint with a black handle. And that sleeves into here uh, very nicely. And it just kind of plugs in and that's also not gonna fall out. So that's one of the smaller accessories that this comes with. So uh, do not lose that. All right, and for his final accessory, one of the most controversial accessories in this box set is this stuffed unicorn that Deadpool is known to have in the movie, um, some of his habits. So that's kind of all I'll hint at from there, but he does have a nice white blue eye with some slight gold right there on the horn of the figure, and it's done in a nice white plastic. Um, there is some sculpted in details in there, but it's kind of hard to pick up with my lighting. And as you can see, Deadpool is holding it with no problem. So 
you can use this and all kind of props or some comedic photography if you wanted to go ahead and do that. So that's a nice addition. Um, I did not think we would get this figure, uh, let alone this figure package, which was one of the most controversial uh, accessories that he could have come with. So that's very funny to see. But yeah, so those are all his accessories. Let's get into the articulation and then we'll do some quick size comparisons. Taking a closer look at Deadpool's articulation, for the head, we have a kind of retro Spider-Man inspired dumbbell peg. I am not fond of this on this figure. I think on Spider-Man it worked a little bit better, but I cannot get him to look uh, up further than that. And it kind of just pushes back. So I'm kind of disappointed in him looking up. He doesn't, you know, look up too much, which kind of sucks. And going down, it's very minimal as well. I would have thought, you know, having this kind of uh, sculpted in neck that we would get a little bit more tilt out of that, but it's not really working entirely too well on this head. So we do get a little bit of side to side with that double barbell peg. So that's not too bad, but I wish we could have got a, a little bit better choice of range on that. But moving into the butterfly joint, uh, there's no complaints here. It moves back and forth pretty well. And you can get his arms to kind of move forward so he can grab both of his hands like that. So that's not too bad. And then we get the uh, hinges here at the shoulders. So they go up pretty far. We get the bicep swivel. We get double jointed elbows. And then on the hands, we get the same hinge on every set of hands, except for the gun wielding hands. We get kind of the hinge where it lets your wrist go up and down. So that's really nice. And then we get a hinge that goes forward pretty well. And then it goes back really nicely. And then we do get, you hear that little ratchet in there. So you can do 360 on that uh, waist swivel there. And then we do get the T-jointed hips, so you can go out about that far without these guns getting in the way here. And then you can go forward about this much. Back, you're not gonna get too much just because of the sculpt work here. We do have the upper thigh swivel. We do get double jointed knees, which you can kind of get some better range on there. So that's not too bad. And we do not get any boot swivel up here, any cut here but we do get the hinge that allows that foot to go up very nicely. Um, and then you can go back just as well. And then we do get the ankle rockers built into these. So uh, nice setup on this Deadpool. Like I said, the only drawback I guess that he has is the damn retro Spider-Man uh, neck peg. Um, it just does not do justice for this Deadpool. I'm not you know too upset about it i think the figure overall is still a must get but it's not the best neck setup you know that's the only kind of nitpick i have with this figure so uh, yeah so standing him upright let's get into some quick size comparisons since we have the figure here already and then we'll put him back here standing up nice and straight get him to his highest point figure that I have on hand, you know, we were talking about the neck peg. Here is the retro or vintage uh, Spider-Man. And they're at a very similar height, standing toe to toe. Deadpool is slightly taller than Spider-Man here. So yeah, I'm not too fond of the neck peg on this one as well, but it just works a little bit better here. And another figure from this wave I have on hand that I did enjoy from the wave is the Armored Up Daredevil. And so, you know, just having some red buddies here, but this Daredevil was badass. I recommend this to anybody. I love the paintwork on this. I wish they would have put this red on the Silver Centurion Iron Man. That would have killed that figure. Put that at the top of my list. Uh, yeah, and they're standing at a very similar height. Deadpool is standing slightly taller as well. And then taking Daredevil out, let's bring in a villain that I have right here on hand. We have the Marvel Legends Doctor Doom from Walgreens. Was this a Walgreens exclusive? No, this was the scroll build a figure. Sorry. And 
Doom is standing a little bit taller with that uh, kind of hood. I don't have this cape attached right now because it's a little annoying to handle, but you can see the size comparison there. A lot of you guys have this Dr. Doom on hand. You should have it on hand. So here's kind of a quick reference if you don't have Deadpool popping up in your store yet. Let's get this guy out of here. So that's kind of the last little size comparison I'll do for you guys tonight. But overall, I gotta rate this figure you know, like a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing I wish they would have fixed was the neck peg. Maybe you just go back to that traditional Marvel Legends peg. That would have gave us a lot of range if they did it right. Um, even this system they're using, they can do it right. I think they're kind of still uh, paving the way for themselves. But I highly recommend this Deadpool. Um, it kind of sucks that you have to buy it in a two pack. I prefer not to. I would love to have this single carded. Um, but overall, it's a really great purchase. So yeah, just thank you guys for watching this video all the way through and please rate, comment, subscribe, smash that like button, follow me at jdilla320 on Instagram if you guys wanna see some newer pickups or some newer posts of these figures. Um, I'm very active on there. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna end this review. Um, so this is JD Reviews signing out, peace.